Do you live in the countryside or in a city? More than half the world's population now lives in cities and that number is only growing. City life often means crowded spaces, endless traffic jams and bad infrastructure. And when people move to new cities, loneliness can be a huge problem. It can also be an issue for older people. Luckily, there are quite a few solutions floating around and that's what we'll take a look at today on Shift. Whether it's Kinshasa, Tokyo or Dhaka, megacity populations are exploding. According to a UN report, Indian capital Delhi will hit 43 million in the next 10 years. And that's just one example. When cities grow, the needs of its inhabitants are rarely prioritised. So in order to better understand those needs, city planners in Estonia's capital Tallinn came up with a new idea, digital twins, creating virtual copies of new districts before they actually get built. And that's what we have here, a digital twin of Hundipia, a future district in Estonia's capital Tallinn. The virtual representation helps to test and improve living conditions in the new quarter before the building process starts. One of the benefits of having a digital twin in the planning stages is, for example, we can already uh, simulate the microclimate and look how we change the cityscape to actually make it better for us people and for nature. Marcus Hell and his team created this digital twin with the help of data on the structure of the area, transport routes, the weather and vegetation. Next, they used the digital twin to map out the general design of the district and to find ideal spots for schools, shops and cafes. So digital twin firstly helps you place the density to different spots and uh, play around with that. And understanding uh, where the people are in that area. And this uh, is actually the foundation. The digital twin can also simulate construction materials and energy demand. It helps the planners calculate how the cityscape, greenery and weather will affect the microclimate of the new district. I changed the street 20 degrees to the left, I put some trees on front of the waterfront and now I uh, change the wind on top of it, then suddenly I can see the heat islands and the cold islands changing. And this gives me, for example, this universal thermal uh, comfort index, which measures which temperature are comfortable for people. Hell estimates that using the digital twin could reduce CO2 emissions by 80% over the first five years alone. The digital twin helps us to see how much materials we need, uh, what is their footprint in general, and what happens if we change out those materials. Instead of having to rely on experience and opinions, digital twins fed with large amounts of data can find the best possible options from an environmental, social and economic perspective. This could also help promote using public transportation, walkways, bicycle lanes and recreational areas. Hell hopes that more digital twins will be developed using this software in accordance with each city's unique requirements. In three to uh, five years, our plan is actually to make it more self-service, more universal, so it would actually apply to places that have a much different climate than Estonia has, like Mumbai in India, for example. So you just take the tool, you put your plot in, and you can actually work with it for your, yourself. Mumbai and Tallinn are clearly very different cities, but they do have one thing in common. Many people living there can often feel lonely. In India, there's an app for older people to combat this problem. It's supposed to help those who feel alone online and offline. Chandrakanta and Ramesh Sani live alone in a flat in Gurugram, a satellite city of Delhi. Both their sons live abroad with their families. We do feel lonely. Our children want us to move abroad, but it's difficult getting visas. And honestly, we belong to a generation that loves our own Indian culture. No matter how many facilities are available in other countries, it cannot replace the comfort we feel here. Their children recommended the app-based service AMOA. The app helps the elderly access medical services, home health care, home maintenance services, and even a community to engage with over entertainment sessions. A caregiver called Amoa Daughter looks after the couple's needs and gives them company. For the Sanis, their caregiver is 25-year-old Mahima Sharma. 
The Yamoa daughter spends time with her assigned senior citizens and helps them sort out their medical documents by using the app. It lets you add a person's medical history, their doctors and insurance details. I look after a lot of people who are quite old and live alone as their children live in a different country. So I take care of a lot of things, their medication, booking medical appointments, and every day we call them at a particular time to check on them to see if they need anything. Currently, I take care of 35 people. Mahima treats us like a family member. She asks about our daily routine too and immediately notices if I am sounding low and asks if everything is okay. But services like Omoa come at a cost. The membership plans range from 50 cents to 170 euros per month. Omoa states that medical records and other information are safe from misuse. However, great care should be executed when handing over information to a company. They're a good option for those people who can afford it. But bulk of them in old age are, find it unaffordable. The Sanis have found an affordable partner in Omoa that provides them with necessary services and it's also given them a dependable companion like Mahima. For me, giving Omoa that human touch is a great idea. Another classic problem we see with cities are traffic jams. In places like London or Los Angeles, commuters can spend several days a year stuck in traffic. Not only are they a waste of time, but they're also bad for the environment. So aside from living a more sustainable life, how can we motivate people to switch to public transport or cycling? Perhaps by creating a reward system. Let's talk about transportation. Going places without a car could help save CO2 emissions and it might even get you a discount. Green mobility companies are helping individuals to reduce their own emissions related to their transport by helping incentivize them and reward them for using low carbon travel. For example, Greencent are using their technology to reward people for cycling more into work. The Greencent app tracks the distance users travel on their bikes or on public transport, like buses or the subway. For every six kilometers traveled without a car, users are awarded one Greencent. These virtual tokens can then be used in local shops. Greencent currently has 800 users in three countries, the majority of whom live in the Hungarian capital Budapest and in Munich in Germany. In Europe, more than a dozen green mobility companies work with incentives, but cities need to have a few things in place to use these programs. This could be increasing pedestrianised zones, developing more cycling lanes and just always improving public transport to ensure that as many people are kind of sharing out these emissions rather than using their own cars. Incentive schemes are only one piece of the puzzle to reduce traffic and emissions to improve the quality of life in cities. But research has shown that these loyalty programs can motivate users to reduce their carbon footprint. Often people do need that extra push to start engaging with climate solutions. You just download an app and then it kind of tracks it for you. So there's a limit to what you need to do to start getting rewards for living a low carbon lifestyle. In order to increase the quality of life in cities, planners need data. But getting data on cities is easier said than done because they're constantly changing and in some countries, you'll find that not all houses and markets are even registered. Researchers for the Peak Urban Project in Colombia are now using satellite images for their analysis. How much water does a city really need to keep its residents healthy and happy? How many parks are essential for a pleasant urban life? How many streets and bike routes ensure good traffic flow? As cities and demands change, informal settlements, unplanned and unauthorised housing areas can lead to limited access to infrastructure and basic services. At the University Iafit in Medellin, Colombia, researchers in the Peak Urban Program are discovering the power of satellite images. By analysing these images, Juan Carlos Duque and his team were able to spot informal settlements in the city of Medellin. The images also allowed them to spot impoverished areas. 
We develop quantitative methods that allow us to generate variables from these images and to better understand society without making a single survey. The researchers trained a data model named Newton. This system analyzes data to predict the future water requirements in a city based on urban growth projections. You download a series of historical photographs of the city you want to analyze for free, and artificial intelligence, specifically neural networks, begin to understand the dynamics of that growth and can then make forecasts for the future of those urban spots. Satellite images also serve as a valuable tool for identifying informal markets trading outside of formal structures. This allows experts to monitor conditions for merchants, consumers and employees alike. The neural network was trained to detect more signs of commercial presence, like a storefront or merchandise on display. So we looked at millions of points over the city, processed them with this tool and then had new maps of the distribution of commercial activity within the city. The use of satellite images has also become crucial for the global challenge of sustainable urban mobility. Being able to use all these open sources of information in open software obviously allows us to reach new levels of complexity. We can even explore variables currently impossible to test with official information, but this data can really enhance our research processes. Analyzing satellite images can be very useful in urban planning. To safeguard sensitive information, however, data security is crucial when using them. There are many examples of how tech solutions can help improve the quality of life in cities. But in order for these solutions to really have an impact and make a difference, authorities need to fully embrace and promote them. What changes would you like to see in your city? And do you think technology can help find those solutions? Get in touch with us on social media and let us know your ideas. That's it from us today. See you next time.